Welcome to the fifth part of our MXXX tutorial video series. In this tutorial, we will look at a couple more effect routing examples that show the concepts we have learned in the first three videos in real life situations. Let's start with a level follower example. We will create an adaptive chorus and reverb effect by letting the dry wet ratio of both effects be controlled by the follower in an inverse manner. That means loud attacks get a dry sound, the sustains get a more and more wet signal as they fade. This makes for a much more dynamic effect impression compared to the normal always on chorus. We'll add a chorus and a reverb and then we'll attach the dry wet ratios of both effects to a modulator in follower mode. The graph in the lower part of the follower window is an excellent help to adjust min and max levels to get the best result for your case. Adjust max to be around the maximum value that your audio signal has and adjust min to the level where you want the effect control to reach its minimum. Also, adjust attack and release so controller movements fit your material. Not too slow, not too fast. A somewhat similar case is the level crossover, as it also reacts to the input audio level. But here, you don't control certain parameters by level continuously, but you define a number of level ranges as separate bands. We add a crossover module and select Level Mode. A modulator in follower mode has to control the crossover's level control. By the way, this is the intended level crossover use. Without the modulator attached, it basically does nothing. Now we can set up different parts for low and high level bands of the signal. The crossover point is configured in the graph below. Now let's change the crossover to frequency mode. The signal is now split into distinct frequency bands. Again, the crossover points are configured in the graph below. There is no need to merge the bands back at the end. The signals from different lanes are automatically summed up by MXXX at the output at the bottom.
Let's try a drum loop and put a wave shaper effect on the lower band for some nice distortion of the bass. And we put a dynamics module with some decent compression on the treble band to pull up the dirt in the signal. Both add up to an interesting kind of distorted lo-fi sound. Analogous to splitting a signal in frequency or level bands, we can also split it in mid and side or left and right. Notice that, unlike crossover generated bands, left, right and mid side channels need to be merged back with the respective conversion modules. As an example for left, right, we'll build a delay that has a different sync rate on left and right side. We split the signal using the conversion module. Add the two different delays on the lanes holding the left and right signal and merge it back using the conversion module. Now, let's change the left-right conversion into a mid-side conversion and listen how a comb filter sounds on either of the channels. Let's add a little modulation to the frequency also, to make it sound more interesting. We will add a distortion effect only on the mid-channel, which often sounds more clear than distorting everything. The other way around it also sounds interesting. Some effects, such as distortion, can increase the volume a lot. Be sure to keep the side channel volume under control, as boosting it is basically a stereo widener, which sounds bad if overused. Mid and side channel volumes should be in good relation. Just trust your ears. Be invited to open presets from the factory library in edit mode and learn more about how to creatively combine all of these possibilities and why add dozens of effects into stunning new creations. Interesting presets are, for example, the pitch shifted delay and the granular shimmer, which is also an example for the use of feedback. Just get inspired and let your ideas flow.
That's all for now, folks. See you next time.